All right. Hey guys, uh, this is Erica from 062 Gallery, and today we'll be interviewing Tracy and Jenny, who are the artists for our current exhibition, Transplanting. Can you guys start by introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about how this collaboration happened? Sure. Uh, I'm Tracy. I, um, I just finished uh, the second year of a PhD program uh, in my department's called Comparative Human Development at the University of Chicago. Um, and I'm basically training in cultural anthropology or um, ethnographic methods. Um, Jenny, do you want to? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Jenny. I just graduated from SAIC from the photo department. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, and this collaboration started um, around September um, 2019. Um, I had my data on the university, um, the arts and science collaboration, and Tracy found me and we talked on the phone, met a couple of times and applied for the grant for the art and science collaboration. Should I say another detail about how I found you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's a program through the University of Chicago and the School of the Art Institute. Um, they are trying to put arts and science students together to do some kind of uh, more, I don't know, experimental kind of collaborations. Um, and so the organizers of that grant had put together a kind of like a Google Doc where you could go and, you know, see who is interested in applying. And I saw that Jenny had posted her contact info on there um, and that she wanted to do something on plants. So that's sort of how we, that's what we converged on is that we were both really interested in doing a project on plants. Um, and then I think I wrote, I emailed her and then we, we sort of met over the phone. We talked on the phone a bunch and, um, you know, decided what we wanted to do. And then we wrote up the proposal. Uh, we ended up getting the funding and we didn't, we didn't, well, Jenny, did we meet each other after we, I think we submitted the proposal and then we actually met each other in person and then we found out we got it. Um, but yeah, we didn't, we didn't really, we didn't have a relationship. We didn't know each other um, outside of applying for this uh, funding to do the project. Yeah. Yes. I mean, when we met, we already um, working around plants in different fields. Uh, my thesis project was also about plants and immigration from my own like personal perspective. And Tracy was also working with plants and doing her research um, in Peru. So we both were very interested in plants and like what there is like behind like what we know from the daily life. So um, yeah, I, I think kind of. one of the one interesting thing was that I like before really knowing Jenny and I looked on her website and she had some really beautiful um, photographs that I, I, I sort of saw, you know, they, they, they were of plants in, in different vessels in different settings. Um, and I, I, I sort of thought of those as like a portrait of a plant instead of a portrait of a human being. And I think that's like one thing that we kind of, um, I don't know, in talking to each other, that's one thing that we got sort of excited about was like, well, what does it mean to take a portrait of a plant and to center the plant in an image and those kinds of questions. Um, but yeah, we both have been interested in plants for a while. Cool. Um, yeah, so can you tell me a little more about what the process was like working, especially towards the end of the project when maybe you weren't like when you were working with some restrictions um, and like doing things long distance? Well, we were only long distance when we were actually writing up the proposal to get the funding. But after that, we, that was, so that was last summer. So then we came, we both came back to our campuses in the fall and that's when we met up. And um, after that, we, we always worked together. We, um, you know, we, we were, we identified people who we, wanted to interview. So this is, I guess we didn't really, did we say this? That, that sort of the premise of the project is that we would interview people from across Chicago um, who had immigrated to the US at some point in their lives um, and who had 
uh, sort of like a strong relationship with plants in some way. So it, it was, it, it was, and I think it still is pretty open-ended, but you know, people who had memories of plants from childhood that they, that they played with a plant or they foraged with their families or, um, it, re it really could have been anything, but we just wanted to talk to people who had that, that strong relationship. Um, I forgot where I was going with this. Yeah, do you have anything? So, so we, I think I remember we, we said we will interview people that immigrated to Chicago and have some kind of relationship to plants, if it's from childhood or something more recently um, that they cre like they created here. Um, so it's kind of different way of relation to plants and language. Um, and yeah, and then the, the quarantine happened and we kind of stopped interviewing. We had like a conversation, should we continue interviewing people over Zoom or we like the in-person experience is very important and we kind of stopped interviewing. So we had this like thought in around March um, and we decided that the experience of coming to someone's place and seeing the environment and having the conversation in person is very important. So we stopped interviewing in March uh, people and we, and maybe it was good decision because then it's, we really started to think about the material that we collected and how we um, like transform it from the idea on the paper and proposal and, and interviews to something more physical and, um, and, and, like, um, and solid idea. Yeah. Yeah, so I think we had planned, in the, in the beginning we were like, oh, we're gonna interview 50 people or 100 people. <laughs> Um, which is so impractical, but I think over time, then we said, we're going to interview, we're going to do 10 interviews, but yeah, because I didn't realize that's what you meant, Erica, but yeah, because of COVID, um, yeah, we, we stopped at five interviews, um, which it doesn't seem like that much, but actually we found that like within each interview, there was like this whole world of information that people would kind of suck us into. So with, you know, with a single interview, we would, we would sort of go back to that and just like keep talking. Um, and doing background research on like the history of a of a particular plant that someone would talk about, um, and so actually five interviews became like a lot of a lot of information and a lot of knowledge, a lot of narratives, just a lot of stuff to sort through. But yeah, we would have kept going, and maybe we still maybe in the future we will interview more people. But yeah, I forgot that we sort of had to yeah we had to stop doing that because of everything that's going on. Yeah, we have like a very um, specific plan about the details and what is happening when uh, by the end of the project and then the quarantine happened and like changed everything. Yeah. And, and I don't know, for me, it also like made me kind of look inside because I spend like a lot of time in my apartment and not going really outside for interviews. So it kind of forced me to look around, like around my apartment, in the alleys, in the garden that around the apartment, and not like looking for, I don't know, outside in a way, if that makes sense. Yeah. Do you, yeah. Jenny, I feel like this is the perfect segue for you to, to say like how you, because the images that you made, like the photographic images you made are, are from that part of the timeline right of like yes being quarantined and kind of like stuck in your neighborhood um yes yeah I, I was I was working in my studio in SAC before and the studio was very kind of organized for my thesis project and it was hard for me to think about anything else about about this project and then I was in my apartment and I started to like having walks in the alley or like in the streets around my apartment and it was kind of the beginning of the spring so everything was like blooming and growing um, and it kind of forced me 
I don't know if it forced me, but I started to look more on the, um, on the weeds um, that started to grow also because they kind of started uh, growing first. Um, they're growing pretty fast. And I started to collect them. I started like to bring them home and do an experiment and photographing them. And with a conversation that I had with Tracy, um, like over Zoom, this idea of like how to make the photographs kind of develop of like going outside, looking at the alleys and the conversations we had. Um, and yeah, and then I like kind of continued to experiment in my apartment and created these images. Hmm. I guess we became really obsessed with weeds at some, like in the very beginning, I think the first interview we did, which was um, with, a, with a retired nurse um, who had come from Korea um, a few decades ago. And what, what was, do, Jenny, do you remember, was it the dandelion salad? She was telling us that like back home, women would collect dandelion leaves and they would make salad and I don't know it just sort of opened up this conversation about um like I think she you know, said something about yeah it started from the salad about the dandelion and then she said afraid uh, of being caught that she like she's afraid to collect dandelion around her apartment or around her house because she's afraid to get tickets. Um, and then I became interested in like, if it's invasive, so why is she afraid to get ticket for collecting it? Um, I think there's like a forest outside of her apartment. Yeah, I think, I think she, so she lives on the, the north side of Chicago and um, there was a, she was just talking about like collect, foraging, foraging for wild plants in parks and how there might be like regulations or stipulations around, um, you know, you're not allowed to take from the land there. And um, uh, yeah, sort of joked to us that she was worried about getting ticketed. And um, yeah, that just got us really interested in, in you know, like, like what, it, what is a weed? What is that word? And what does that mean to different people? Because um, actually a lot of I guess, you know, like a lot of the most sacred plants and different herbal, tr different traditions of herbalism are weeds in other, you know, cultural or medical, et cetera, kind of cultures and traditions. Um, and so, yeah, I guess like we kind of got obsessed about like the context of a weed. It's a weed here, but it's like a delicious salad green here, or it's a medicine here. And dandelion was the weed that came up I think actually like Jenny made it came up, come up in the interviews, which is kind of a fun part of the process of like, we could both direct the interviews and, in, you know, into different topics or themes. But right, Jenny, you kept asking people about the dandelion and like trying to get them to talk about wheat. But that, so yeah, we just kind of got obsessed with that. Yeah, after the first interview, I got obsessed with it because I, I felt like it's like um, kind of a gray area that you're not allowed but at the same time, it's here. Um, so, especially from her story about the dandelion, that she like making salad of this, but at the same time, it's invasive and she is afraid to pick it up. So, I think this area of like in like the politics kind of kind of um, interested me. Yeah. Um. Can you guys tell me a little more about how you found your interview subjects and selected them? I feel like, and Jenny, I don't know if you, I think you know this, but I feel like when I, like the, so the first person we interviewed, who was the, the nurse from Korea who talked about the salad, um, I had met her when I had first, when I had moved back to Chicago, like a year before I had met her because she has this really fascinating like little underground business or you know she she propagates a lot of plants in her house and then she's posting them on Craigslist and offer up and all these websites and she's getting people from all over the city to come to her house which is essentially you know it's like it's a it's a nursery space where she's doing all these propagations um, and she has like the first time I went to her house, she just had like these people coming in and out. And I saw how, how 
I don't know, kind of like how prolific her, her plant practice was. Like she was propagating, she had, you go in her house, she just has like hundreds of little cups and containers and she's experimenting. And then she would have people come in and, and selling, you know, the baby, the starter plants to them. Um, and I went to her house to buy a plant. I was looking for, her. there was like a particular plant that I loved and I saw that she was selling it cheaply. So anyway, I met her and when I met her, I, I, I thought, ha, I really want to do a project that will let me interview her, that will let me sit down with her and like hear all of her stories and how she got into it. Um, and then the following year I saw, you know, I saw the information for the grant and I was like, oh, this is the perfect opportunity to um, talk to that person and to, to try and talk with other people. Um, and, but I guess to answer, it just kind of snowballs in a way. Like sometimes I think with one person they had, well, did anyone tell us about, I'm trying to think now. So after that, how do Jenny, what do you? Um, then I think we interviewed um, the lady from the grocery store next to my apartment. Um, there's like a Mexican store. And I don't know, I just had kind of a connection with the owner and she will like give me some food that she made like Mexican food um, and I was obsessed with cacti so she like made um, kind of a salad of the prickly pear um, leaves and she will give me to try and I don't know we just had a conversation about I don't know, plants or food and I felt that she might be also a person that um, will be interesting to interview her um, and then I think I just kept asking people if they know someone that have a connection to plants and immigrated and would like to be interviewed. And Tracy made some um, posters in the university for people. Um, and then I think one or two reached out to you. Yes. So it's in different ways we found the people. Yeah, I had, I had posted online. I posted on Craigslist in the what is it in the community section? I don't know if you ever read that. It's kind of fun to read. But one person replied. <laughs> like I was repeatedly posting it and one person replied. And he ended up being like such an incredible interview. We had such a great conversation with him. So yeah, we found people in different ways, but it feels like it just kind of is snowballing. Like the more we talk about it, the more, you know, we, it's like, oh, what about this person? What about this person? Yeah, right before the quarantine, we had, I think, like three or four more people that we wanted to interview, um, that we finally found someone. Um, yeah, I think like once it started, we just found more and more people. Cool. Yeah. Um, not to deviate a little bit, but uh, since Lucy is focusing on the opiate crisis in contemporary New England for her dissertation project. And Jenny, you're exploring the questions on immigration and hierarchy. Um, how do those different subjects, how did those lead you to collaborate together? Or do you, is there any influence in this project? I don't think my dissertation project really has to well, there's overlaps because, you know, I, I like I have particular interests, but yeah, the dissertation is sort of on like how people are, you know, working through the aftermath of the opiate crisis on the East Coast. Um, uh, yeah, this is like a different kind of project for me in that it's it's like really plant and herbalism focused. I guess I'm I'm using the same methods that I do in my just the way that I work is I do a lot of interviews with people. I do a lot of like unstructured kind of conversations um, that you could call interviews. I do a lot of background research and archival research. Um, and I, I, I do a lot of participant observation. So I, I love to sort of follow people around if they'll let me. Um, and that was, we, we, I mean, we didn't, we weren't really, you know, following people and observing them in their in their day to day practices, but we did get to go, you know, to their homes or, um, you know, in the case of one interview, we went to the grocery store where she works. Um, so we did get to kind of like move around the city into these different places and to see people, um, I don't know, like in their natural environments in a way. 
Um, but I, I think that's the main overlap for me is that I have this, these methods, I have this way of working um, and that, that translated, I wanted to bring that into the project. And I guess I, I also wanted to like, I wanted to try working ethnographically and to represent that in a way that I don't really get to represent that in an academic setting, if that makes sense. So I wanted to, to do ethnography, but to, to show it, to show like the process and the product of it in a totally different way. Yeah. For me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I wouldn't say that this project is necessarily started from like talking about hierarchy. Um, it was more about like plants and immigration for me, and it's kind of developed with um, what like the interviewed people talked about and like making the research about weeds and where they're coming from and how they classified as weeds and something that um like not important or not useful in our society today. So I think it just came from like the conversations we had about it. Um, I mean, yeah, maybe like this, this was in my, the back of my mind for like while I was making the project, but it's not necessarily something that like we started from. So it just like maybe, um, yeah, it's like uh, because of the process and because of the research and because um, all the conversations we had between us and with the people that we interviewed, so it came out. But it's not. I don't. I don't think it's something that was there in the beginning. It, it's like we made a new project to collaborate on, but I, we, we, I think we both brought a lot of things in from our, from our existing practices that we were already doing that we wanted to bring together. And then I think it's fun, like, it's so fun that part of the newness or, or you know, part of the newness of the project is that we're combining our methods. So even if we're bringing in methods that, you know, I, like I always interview people, I always, that's just what I do. But to combine the interview with, um, like, it, in the beginning, we decided we wanted to take portraits of people, which, like, didn't, it didn't exactly pan out. Um, we ended up doing more, like, portraits of plants. Um, but, yeah, to be doing interviews with people and then to be also taking their portrait, like, in the same session, in the same space, that felt really new to me. So, you know, both bringing existing things, but then... Like when you mush it all together, it's just like inevitably something new comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like before this project, I never really interviewed someone that I didn't know. Um, I was always working around like things that are close to me, um, as my family, um, friends, um, everything that I know. And I like created from something that I know like something new so this is like something new for me to like to work with Tracy on this project and go in and interview people um yeah, it was like completely a new experience for me to work in this way what what was it like for you I never really I don't think we really talked about this um I mean I I think I learned a lot um because it was i mean it was different um like when i was listening to the interviews after that i realized that i was like not talking a lot i was like listening a lot to the people because it was like a new experience for me and i mean it felt sometimes that like you are more uh, feel more comfortable in the this um in this situation of like going and interviewing people. Um, so I felt like I'm like learning a lot in this um, situations. And then I had like to process it by myself and like think about what we had from the interview and only then to create, I think. Um, maybe this is why it was a little bit longer process for me because I had to adjust like, to a new um, way of working. Yeah, 
interviewing can be hard <laughs> or tricky. Yeah. yeah. Especially for us, I feel like we we didn't have like such a specific a specific kind of research question of like, okay, this is what we want to find out. Um, which is, which is most of the time, I would say that's like what you're pushed to when you're doing research, but we had a more open ended. I mean, I think we started some of the interviews, like, well, tell us about your relationship with plant. Like it was so open ended, almost in a way that made me really uncomfortable at times. Like, Oh, I just, I wish we had, like, I, I can't narrow down. I feel like we need to have something more specific, but yeah, it's interviewing. It's like fun and hard and tricky. And it, I think it was cool yeah. that we got to do it together. Yeah. All right. Um, cool. You guys have anything that you want to add before we close the interview and Lastly, um, just anything that you want people to really take from the exhibition? That's a tricky question. Um, I don't know, maybe it's like asking too much from people to take something from an exhibition that um, I would say for me, I, just Jenny, while you think through that, um, I would say for me, it's I got pretty obsessed with like the process, like wanting to put the process on display. Erica, you know this, like you've had to endure my, <laughs> like my very specific ideas. Um, but, you know, like one component of the show is that I, I, I wanted to put all of my, my field notes from the project up on the wall. So I, you know, got to like, rip out all the pages from my notebook and you know I, ma I mailed I mailed you all because I'm, I'm in Vermont right now and so I wasn't able to install so you know I, I like mailed all my notebook pages um, and they got sort of like pinned up on the wall um, I think I yeah I think I just want I wanted people to really look at like the whole process of, of working on a on a project and, and doing uh, kind of research, you know, re I think people have like certain ideas about what research is. Um, and I, yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I don't know how to explain that. I just wanted to show like, almost in a way, like getting people to, um, gosh, it's hard to articulate. Maybe you should edit this out, but, <laughs> um, just wanting people to like giving them a chance to like look into my notebook. I think that's, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I like, I love the chance to look into people's notebooks and see like all of their scribbles and everything, their whole process of thinking through, you know, coming to a, a particular way of thinking or like a way of being or like a, no, a particular knowledge or something. Um, and then the audio clips, I guess I had the same thing in mind with the audio clips is that they sort of function as like the raw interview footage that you could um, that you could you could kind of like get a glimpse into the process and how we were working and what we were doing when we were working, um, even though they're not exactly raw because I edited them and I selected certain clips. Um, but yeah, just to give a view into the pro sound, the process rather than, you know, like a like a finished final product. Yeah. I think I wish people will, okay, I was listening for like the last few weeks to the book, uh, How to Do Nothing by Jenny O'Dell. And I was really hoping that people that like after the show, they will just look a little bit differently on I know everything outside, like paying attention more to the small and not important things um, and not classifying everything by beautiful or not beautiful or like necessary or like if it's like valuable or not. Um, and maybe just, I don't know, just pay attention to I, I know maybe it's like a little bit naive but 
I mean, that's what I wish people will um, just like maybe look around more and not only going from like home to work or home to the other place you need to be and maybe a little bit slow down and not to be afraid from the things that like in the backyard um, because they're also valuable. I mean, the garden can be also beautiful with some weeds and not only with the plants that we bought in like the plant shop. Um, yeah. I mean, I definitely like looking on plants in a very different way because of this project. If I, Even though I thought I knew plants before, um, I see them now in a different way. Um, I mean, like when we were, when I was going over the interviews, um, I didn't know so many names of the plants that people were talking. And then after that, I had to like go back home, go over my notes or the interview and look for the plant and like, oh yeah, I know this name Hebrew, or maybe I just saw the image on Instagram and now I know the name. So I feel like something about this project made me really like look around and a little bit slow down. Um, maybe it's also because of the current thing we had to really slow down everything um, and just I don't know like pay attention to everything around us because we have it only for like one time I guess I don't know yeah and to pay attention to the context too right like what a what a plant um, means or what it's used for what it looks like or like really anything about it could change um, when it moves across different contexts. And I, I feel like the, really the whole point for us was to, to kind of like display or define plants in a way that people are not, um, they're not accustomed to doing. Um, you know, so that's why I think like the, por the plant portrait, the idea of the plant portrait came about. Um, and also like digging, digging into these really deep, complex, um, social, economic, political, historical, um, you know, th threads that plants are attached to was a really fun part of it for us. And I don't, I think, I don't know, we often think of the plant as like a biological organism. It's there in the ground, it's growing, it doesn't move. Um, but when you think of it, it, when you think of like the social life of the plant, it actually moves quite a bit. So I guess that's my thing. I, I, if I could have people like think and get people to think a little bit differently about plants and to see that there are these political, economic, social kind of histories that are, that are really complicated. Yeah, I had a really interesting conversation like during this project with someone that she's um, foraging and it's just when people know what the value of the plants have they don't necessarily want to like throw it they want to maybe keep it um so yeah maybe this also from i want people to have it from the from the show just a little bit more knowledge about um the plants that they have um around them like a new way of seeing something that you have seen a, a billion times and you thought you knew <laughs> but you didn't you don't yeah. really know yeah yeah, yeah. I, your images jenny really do a, the portraits do an awesome job of that of like staging the the plant and helping the viewer to see it in a new way it's like this kind of like beautiful abstract object. Um, so I just wanted to add that. <laughs> um, cool. Do you guys have anything else? I don't think so. Okay. Well, I just wanted to make sure to mention this at the end um, to remind everyone that due to COVID-19 will open by appointment only. So if you want to visit, um, please email info at 062official.com to make an appointment and the exhibition will continue through the 14th of August. And thank you guys for watching.